Westies. Me personally, I had heard of the Westies and knew who they were. But we, I mean, we had nothing to do with them. They were Irish, we were Italians. They were mixed, we were Dagos. I mean, that's how they looked at us, that's how we looked at them. Um, I guess it was like 1978, it was 1978, Danny Grillo was close with um, Jimmy Coonan, who was basically, at that time, the underboss of the Westies. Now, the Westies were very involved in unions. You know, I mean, nothing happened on the west side of Manhattan without them getting a piece of it, including if you went on the aircraft carrier, you know, uh, the Intrepid. They got a piece of every ticket. <laughs> I mean, the Westies had the, the, the west side of Manhattan locked down. What happened, the first thing that happened is in this series of events was Roy DeMeo realizing that Jimmy Coonan would take over the Westies if the current leader of the Westies, Mickey Spillane, was out of the way. So what Roy did one night was go over to Spillane's house um, with Henry and ring the doorbell and over the intercom Mickey asked who it was and said it was Roy and Mickey said we right down and came down and opened the door and Roy shot him dead, shot him right in the head, left him in his fucking door, you know, and left. Called Jimmy Coonan and said, I got you a present. Okay. At that point, Roy DeMeo, Danny Grillo, and the Westies were doing shit together after that. Loan shocking, drugs. You know, they were doing that. What happened was the Westies, there, there was a, probably the biggest loan shock in the country. Jewish guy, uh, Ruby Stein. The Westies went to him and borrowed all this money. We're talking serious bucks, like over a quarter of a million. They lure him into the bar where they used to hang out one night. Danny Grillo shoots him, kills him. Each one of the Westies that would add, Jimmy Coon and Mickey Featherstone, uh, Billy Beatty, all put a bullet in them, just so nobody could say that they didn't do it. Um, they took his body and they dismembered it, but Jimmy Coonan forgot to puncture the lungs. So probably in like two, three weeks, out in Rockaway, Ruby pops up, his torso. You know, they identify it. Um, now we know that Ruby was whacked. We were his people, the Gambinos, all right. Um, put feelers out and we found out what had happened. Yeah. Not the Danny Grillo thing. We didn't, we kind of protected Danny. So it wasn't about the Danny killed Ruby Stein, it was about the Westies killed Ruby Stein. So what happens next is they find out that Mickey Featherstone was a, who was the underboss of the West, he was done, um, was next Green Beret, Vietnam guy. So they figure me and him are gonna gel. All right. So they send me in to Mickey and you know me and Mickey get to talking and I, I started, you know, getting really friendly with, with the Westies and Paul Castellano Told me, he says, we need to set up a meeting with these guys. We want a meeting. And this is kind of a funny story. So we have this meeting at Tommaso's. There's Tommy Bellotti, Nino Gaggi, Paul Castellano, me, uh, a couple other guys from the family, Roy DeMeo, um, at Tommaso's on Bay 8th Street. And the representatives from the Westies was Jimmy Coon and Mickey Featherstone. Now, them coming to that meeting, they figured one of two things. Either some kind of deal was going to be made 
over this Ruby Stein thing because they knew what it was about. Or they were going to get killed. So what they do is they tell the rest of the Westies, Mad Dog Sullivan, Kaminsky, you know, all the Kelly brothers, uh, they tell them, look, you wait in this apartment with all our shit. I mean, we're talking hand grenades, you know, machine guns. If you don't hear from Mickey, and I forget the time, but say it was 10 o'clock, right? You just come to Tommaso's and kill everybody that's in there. And the Wessies were more than capable of doing that. All right. So what happens is the Westies wind up snorting so much cocaine and drinking so much booze, they all get totally fucked up on 11th Avenue at this apartment, Sissy's apartment, Mickey's wife. All right. So they're all fucked up. Mickey, I mean, we settled this whole thing. I mean, the Westies were going to be part with us. All their shit had to go through us. Any kind of hits that they did had to get sanctioned by Paul. You know, I mean, everything was straightened out. Mickey gets so fucked up because after all of this is straightened out, everybody starts drinking and doing this and that and this. So what happens is Mickey forgets to make the phone call. According to what they told the Westies, right at that, when Mickey didn't make the phone call by, say, 10 o'clock, the Westies were supposed to load up, come to Tommaso's, kill everybody. Just machine gun, throw hand grenades, do whatever you're going to do. But like I said, 